Hello, D Light Channel. Timak is my name. Welcome once again to this very exciting series that we're running. We started a series a couple of weeks back in which we are focusing on money management. We've said a lot. It's very difficult to do any recap right now that will be meaningful. So if you like to know what we've shared before, please go back to the last set of videos and watch. But this week we are continuing our conversation and we are picking it up from where we dropped it last week. Last week we landed that you need to deliberately create assets. You need to prioritize the creation of assets over liabilities. And we gave a very different definition of what assets are and what liabilities are. You will do well to check them. So, this week we are saying, now that you are aware that you need to prioritize the creation of assets, how exactly do you go about it? Let me share very basic fundamentals with you when it comes to asset creation. Asset creation thrives on the very simple principle that we were taught, I think in primary school, the principle of compound interest. Yes, the reason why I am starting from the principle of compound interest is that many people give up on asset creation because they think, oh, I don't have a lot of money, what I have is very small, what I have can't go far. I need you to sit down, take 10,000 Naira or $10,000 or whatever your currency is wherever you are or even a smaller amount of figure and compound it with whatever interest rate that you choose to use and see how big it can get over time. Now, in terms of the real value of the money, you certainly will lose some value because of what the accountants and the economists will call the time value of money. But believe me, you will be significantly better off if you can leverage on the principle of compound interest. And that leads me to the very first thing you need to learn how to do if you will make the best use of whatever is left after you have taken care of consumption. And the first one is learn to save. Yes, learn to save. If you are not in the top earning category where 10% of your salary or 5% of your income or 15-20% of your income is material, your way to developing and becoming financially independent is to start by saving. What does that mean? Set aside a specific amount or better still, a specific percentage of your salary or your income and set it aside as savings. In the beginning, your first objective is aggregation. Just put it up together. There are simple ways of doing it. Do not think that it is easy for you to deliberately dip your hand in your pocket and save. The psyche of money and the pressure of life typically make that very difficult. So, what are the recommended ways out of it? You can have a standing debit against your account. Open another account that is for savings. Right now, don't worry too much about what is the interest rate, what are you getting. The first objective, like I said, is just aggregation. Open a different account. Make sure it has no ATM. Make sure it doesn't have any checkbook. Make sure that you will have to make a lot of effort before you can touch the money. And then issue a standing instruction. With these days of e-banking, you can actually set up this direct debit yourself. Set up this direct debit. And in small bits and pieces, regularly take money from your salary whatever amount or percentage of agreed and aggregate it in that account. The beauty of this is the regularity and the beauty of this is the compound interest principle. And what happens to the mind? After a while, your mind just stops 
planning around that money. It becomes a given. Your mind just forgets that money exists and it is there. Now, that's the first step. When you succeed in aggregating, you then need to now start worrying about investment. And that leads me to another big issue. You need to be careful. I'm using those words deliberately. You need to be careful and deliberate with your investment. And let me sound a note of warning here. If you see any quick return, I'm sure many of you are aware of what has happened to MMM and how many people have been caught in that trap. Run! <laughs> what did I say? Run! Any means of making money that you do not understand the fundamentals Run! If money was so cheap and so free to make, the people, the rich people like Bill Gates, like Dan Gote, like all these successful business people who are sweating in, in real estate, in software development, nobody will be doing any of those hard work. So if you find anything that looks too cheap, where you are getting 300, 500% return and it's promised, and you do not understand the fundamentals. What did I say? Run, R-U-N. This includes even some of the investments. I'll get to that in a bit, but let me touch on this. Even when it comes to investing in shares, be careful and deliberate that you understand the fundamentals of the companies you are investing in. So, if you do not understand the fundamentals, do not invest. Give it time. It will either prove not to be real, or you will get to understand it, and you can make up your mind whether you want to put your money there or not. So, what am I saying? I'm saying, just a quick recap, control consumption by auditing your lifestyle and prioritizing asset creation. Number two, when you prioritize asset creation, it usually is easier to start by saving. Open an account, find a means of taking the money without having to consciously do it yourself every month and aggregate it somewhere. Number three, when you have enough pool, but I say enough, it does not have to be one million, it does not have to be two million. When you have a material number, consider investing why because money in itself is a poor store of value like i said there's something the business people call time value of money so you need to invest that then leads to the next question how do you invest what do you invest in before i answer your question of how and what you need to answer the question of who, which is the question of who are you? Where are you in your life's journey? How much appetite do you have for risk? The kind of risk that a young man who is single, not just about starting his career, could, can confidently take and not lose his sleep, if a man who is retiring takes that kind of a risk, he may end up dying as a result of that investment, whether it succeeds or not. Because the sheer anxiety and palpitation that can come out of it can create health complications. So the first question you need to answer is the who question. Who are you? By the way, I hope you are aware that risk and returns are directly proportional. The higher the risk, the higher the returns. So if you are looking for high returns, you must be ready for high risk. And in making that decision, you then need to ask yourself, who are you? What is your risk appetite? Do you have the, are you somebody who, when you suffer a loss or if a decision doesn't go well, it is easy for you to close your eyes, close the chapter, go again, and make another attempt or you are that kind of a person that you just want everything to be precise and every single loss 
or every single poor decision weigh you down, weighs on you, and it takes you weeks and months before you can get out of it, then you must match your profile with your investment options. The second thing is, like I said, where are you in your journey? When you are just starting life, you are starting employment, you are single, you can take any level of risk possibly and you can possibly recover from it. Number one, it's just you. There is no woman to come and harass you or no husband to come and put a gun to your head. You do not have to worry about every time you have to pay school fees and you have to keep running the bills. If it means moving in with your friends, if the decision does not go well, it's easier for you if you are single. So, where you are in your life journey is very, very important. It's a different ball game when you are mid-level in your career. It's a different ball game when you are close to retirement. It's a completely different ball game when you are just retired. And it's a completely different ball game where your children are grown and are successful. And then you really do not even have to worry about whatever happens to your investment. Where you are in your life journey is another critical variable you need to consider. Now, one thing I would like to end with this week because I got to go now is that you may need to consult investment experts. Do not just go blind. And native intelligence can be very expensive. Ask questions. And the beauty of it right now is that there's hardly anything you want that you cannot find information online. Go online, dig around, talk to experts that know, talk to people who have tried, learn from their experiences, learn from their successes, learn from their mistakes, so that you can take your decisions based on clear information and on proper guidance. But there's still a question we have not answered, which is, what are the different types of investment you can make? What are the risks or variables associated with them? And how can you optimize your investment decision? You know what I'm about to say? Meet me here next week as I try to answer those questions for you. Is this making any sense to you at all? I'm feeling alive because I wish I knew this clearly like this some 10 years ago. My options and decisions would have been different. I'm sharing this now because of what I've been through, what I now know, and where I am in my journey. And I hope that you will leverage on this, irrespective of where you are in your journey, to start your journey towards achieving financial independence. By the way, it's never too late to start. So, next week is another appointment. Make sure you don't miss it, as we will dig deeper into options of investment, and how you can be guided on what to invest on or what to invest in, whichever you prefer, and then from there we'll take the conversation forward. It's a pleasure having you here once again this week. As usual, never ever forget that Team Act is still my name, and all I'm trying to do is what? Make a little difference. Thanks for being here this week once again, and see you next week. Don't forget to share this video. Bye!